Hello, welcome for this uh, presentation on the regional risk and the adaptation connected with the climate change. What I'm going to tell you is based on the uh, second world group uh, IPCC on incidence adaptation and vulnerability. The work was conducted for the preparation of the fifth IPCC report. First observation, the climate changes are underway. In 2012, the average uh, temperature on the planet went up 0.89 degrees versus the uh, average 20th century uh, temperature. The arid and semi-arid areas have extended. Acidity on the superficial layer of the ocean water has increased over the last 40 years, and the average sea level has gone up by 17 centimeters since 1880, and nowadays we're gaining 3.3 millimeters per year. Ever since the end of the 60s, the uh, world snow pact has uh, decreased by 10 to 15 percent, and uh, 85% of the glaciers are melting. A recent study has shown a trend towards an increase in exceptional convective events. For instance, tropical typhoons have uh, gained power recently, and uh, we need to understand that the climate threat is based on an interaction between climate hazards, vulnerability, and uh, the exposure of societies and natural environments. The risk can be interpreted as the likelihood of uh, dangerous events occurring. We're talking about a likelihood of incidents. Incidents also has uh, retroactions on the climate system, but also on the decision-making process, be they of uh, socio-economic or political nature. A greater number and severity of uh, events and incidents may lead some society to uh, mitigate uh, anthropic uh, activities such as uh, greenhouse uh, effect gas uh, emission. And we nowadays notice that uh, extreme events such as heat waves, droughts, typhoons, uncontrolled forest fires show how vulnerable we are and how vulnerable and exposed ecosystems and uh, human societies are, which means that we are not fully prepared to the climate variability, the current one and the future evolution. And there are biophysical stresses shown on the picture in red and social stresses in yellow. And there is a resilience space in the middle in green, i.e. the capacity of human systems and natural systems to adjust and face climate hazards. And uh, this means that they have to retain their capacity to adjust, to learn, and to transform themselves. Now, the current and the future danger are strongly correlated with the capacity of uh, socioeconomic decisions and actions to adjust to the new reality. The evolution of our action will allow us to either go towards a more resilience favorable world, a world which is capable of adjusting and resisting the uh, environmental and social stresses, or Conversely, we will go towards a situation in which the resilience space will be dominated by uh, social and environmental stresses. Now, there are five causes for concern, depending on the uh, environmental warming. Here we have the average temperature between uh, 1986 and 2005 purple being the most elevated one. The first cause for concern regards unique systems, including biodiversity and agricultural resources. Nowadays, the uh, risk level is moderate. We would reach an, a high level for a one degree temperature increase. Above two degrees, most species would be submitted to a high risk because of their limited capacity to adjust. Second cause for concern, extreme weather or meteorological events. There is already a moderate risk today, but the risk would become high if the temperature were to increase by one degree. Most extreme events, such as heat waves, will intensify if the average temperature is to increase. But if we consider the specificity and the time scale for these systems, it would be difficult nowadays to assess or estimate their future intensity without a very specific study.
Third cause for concern is about the uh, sharing of incidences, the way they're going to be broken down. The risk is moderate for agricultural production, but a uh, temperature increase in excess of 1.5 degrees would uh, generate uh, a risk due to water shortage in several areas. Cumulative world incidences uh, would uh, be the next cause for concern. Point 0.5 to 1 degree would be a moderate risk on the world economy. If the temperatures increase by 3 degrees, the risk would be high with uh, losses of biodiversity and many uh, ecoservices uh, would uh, disappear and yet they are essential for man. The last cause for concern regards large-scale phenomena. This includes the risks borne by some physical system, which, because they may undergo sudden and irreversible changes. Now, the risk of reaching this threshold is moderate for a temperature increase of one degree, but the risk becomes high if the temperature increases three degrees. I'm now going to tell you about uh, the uh, fifth week presentation. It's not exhaustive. I'm only going to show you some illustrations. The impact on biodiversity and health will be covered in during the six weeks on in this interdisciplinarity. The first three presentations will be made by uh, researchers from CNRM game. Eric Martin is going to tell you about the risks associated with the risk of drought and the shortage of water resources in France. He's going to tell you about aggravating factors that have to do with the climate change. Daniel Goetz is going to tell you about the change in the risk of snow avalanche and changes in the snowpack. Aude Le Monsu will tell you about uh, town vulnerability, vulnerability to climate changes and the impact that this will have on the urban population, followed by Fabienne David from Veolia Recherche and Innovation on strategies, local strategies to adjust with materials and infrastructures, greening of towns. Gris Delieu from uh, CNRS will tell you about intense rainfall and flash floods and the, society, the impact on society. Christelle Bart from Lacey will tell you about the trends in regarding uh, typhoons, and she will talk about uh, vulnerability of territories. Laurent Bob from CNRSLSCE will tell you about uh, climatic change, ocean and ecosystemic services, and the capacities to adjust to uh, these risks. And finally, Sebastian Weissenberger from Moncton, Canada, will tell you about coastal erosion, saline water intrusion and local adaptation measures. There is no universal approach to reduce the risk and vulnerability. The first step to improve adaptation capacities consists in planning and implementing regional and local measures. The populations must become aware of the risks, but this may also take into consideration local traditions and the sensitivity to this kind of risk of local environments and natural environments.